All right. So um, it is week six. We have basically three weeks left, week six, seven, and eight. So we are getting there. Um, this week is trigonometry. And this is an important week because trigonometry is going to come up in calculus. And so it is really important to be able to understand trigonometry or at least have notes handy so you have something to reference when um, you need it in calculus. So the big thing about trigonometry is that we have degrees and we have irradians, which is abbreviated as rad, hence, um, and there's a, if you have your calculator in the wrong one, your answer will be incorrect. And that's the most common mistake I see is people being in degree mode when they're supposed to be in radians or vice versa. So I thought this meme was very appropriate for <laughs> what we're going to be in. So you want to make sure you know how to convert your calculator from a one to the other so that you can make sure you're in the correct mode. So um, this week um, we've got, this is just the outline, let's look at what you have to cover. Um, I did, I believe I, I mentioned this in one of my videos last week, um, this past week, that you're going to have a lot to cover this week. Yes. There are a lot of sections. Um, this is actually 10 sections. I know it's kind of insane. <laughs> the good news is that, you know, your self-assessment is open book, so that's going to be really nice. I have a video already in the classroom where I'm sort of combining 4.2, 4.3 um, together so that there's like one video on those trig functions, the unit circle and right triangle trigonometry. And then I have another video in the classroom where I'm basically combining uh, 5.1 and 5.3 together, where you're solving trig equations. So um, tomorrow I'm going to do a session at 7, same time as today, but tomorrow, on 4.1, which is radian and degree measure. And then that means what I have missing is 4.4 through 4.7 and 5.2. Luckily, 4.5 and 4.6 are just graphs. So as long as you're friends with Desmos or um, you have a handy cheat sheet, you should be completely fine with those. The inverse trig functions in 4.7, I do cover briefly in my second video where I cover chapter 5. So um, after tomorrow's video, you will have most of the stuff covered in various forms. Like the 4.4, I kind of cover a little bit with 4.2 and 4.3. So I tried to cover as much as possible in as few videos as possible to give you the big ideas behind everything you need. Um, the only thing that I don't have a video for are the graphs, but you have Desmos for that. So um, this week you have your discussion, your application assignment, the journal, and the self-assessment. And I did want to mention, um, I didn't really know where to stick this in my presentation, so I just stuck it here. Um, because we are getting near the end of the term, it's a good time to make sure you're registered for next term. G-Life doesn't tell you if you're registered for next term, um, so you'd have to ask your advisor if you're registered. If you're not, I do recommend going straight to calculus while it's fresh in your brain um, rather than taking a break because you might kind of forget things in, the, in between. But, you know, it does depend on your schedule. Um, I think, I don't, I think physics might re rely on this class. I don't remember. It will depend on your schedule. But um, I, now is a good time to make sure that you have that since we are nearing the end of the term. And then especially with holidays like Thanksgiving, you don't want to have that come around and then be like, oh, shoot, I didn't register. I needed to register. So wanted to make sure that you guys get that in. So let's talk about the discussion this week. Um, it says to write a short essay. Now, I know that it says essay. I do not want an essay. So it well, it you, says the word essay, I'm not looking for a paper. I want you to make a regular discussion prompt. So scratch out that whole write a short essay thing because I am not going to be grading an essay. I'm not an English teacher. That is not what I'm looking for. 
So just write a discussion. That's what I really want it to say. Write a discussion. <laughs> Explaining to a classmate how to evaluate the six trig functions of any angle theta in standard position. So if you're going to explain how to do that, the best thing to do is then to provide a demonstration of how to do that. So um, make sure you have a demonstration. Include in your essay, in your post, again, the, the prompt says essay. I don't want an essay in your post. An explanation of reference angles and how to use them. Um, the signs of the functions in each of the four quadrants and the trig values of common angles. Include figures and diagrams. That's the, going to be the only way that you're really going to have this make sense. So... You have certain things that I am looking for. So I'm looking for the explanation in your own words. I'm looking that you're using figures and diagrams. I'm looking to see that you have used a specific example, that it's typed in the discussion box. And if it's not in the discussion box, I will ask you to put it in the discussion box. And references, because you're going to have to be doing some research. Now, it's really important to make sure you are including what it says. So it says, include an explanation of reference angles and how to use them, signs of the functions in each of the four quadrants, and the trig values of common angles. So I will be also checking to make sure you have done that. So if you have anything missing there, you're not going to get full credit. So you might want to make like a checklist of the things that you need to talk about so that you can make sure you hit everything. Um, the discussion prompt does have a way for you to insert images. Things don't always copy and paste from the Internet. What I have found is that if you paste it into a Google Word document, or not Google Word, a Google document, you can copy pictures from the Google document into the discussion. But it doesn't work with equations. And it, you cannot copy pictures from a Word document into the discussion but it does work in Google Docs. So if you want to try typing it in Google Docs to include all your figures, that might save you some time rather than saving all of them and then making sure you post each one into your, your discussion. Moving on to the assignments. So um, again, you have five graded problems this week for the assignment. And do I have... I can't remember if I actually opened up. I'm trying to find where is. Okay, I have my calendar open up. I'm going to open up the classroom because I want to make sure that the images are showing up. Because this assignment in particular, the images like to disappear. So let me just. Okay. So there is one image here. And this same in image is actually in the textbook as well. And then there's one image here with the equation. So it is showing up. If at any point it disappears, you need to send me an email so I can send you a PDF copy of this. Um, I do have a saved PDF with the images in case something happens, because for some reason, sometimes these disappear. But if they disappear, that's not an excuse for not doing the assignment. <laughs> that just means you need to contact me and let me know. <laughs> so... If those disappear, contact me, but right now they're showing up, so I think we should be okay. So um, the week six assignment, most of the questions are straightforward, except for question one. And it's not that it's, well, question one, um, there are multiple ways to get the answer, and that's where that one is a stickler for a lot of people. And because of that, in order for me to really understand what you're doing and making sure that you're not just getting lucky, because it is possible to get lucky on that equation, on that example. Um, you need to be very specific about what you're doing. So you need to tell me what, where your numbers are coming from, what they mean, what you are doing. So if you just have a series of multiplication and then you have some answer, I, you need to tell me why are you multiplying those together? What are these things that you're multiplying together? Units really help. Because then if you're doing a unit conversion, I can follow that. 
Um, but if you just show a whole bunch of numbers and you, there's no explanation of where these numbers came from or why you're multiplying them, I'm going to be very confused. And then you're not going to get full credit because I'm going to be like, I don't know what you're doing. This is for the actual assignment, Tiffany. So um, the journal, you can explain also in words, but sometimes pe don't, people don't turn in the journal at the same time. So also try to explain it in your work as well. Um, even if it's just like labeling things, like putting an arrow and saying this is what this number means or something like that. Um, the rest of the problems, problems two through four or two through five are all straightforward. Um, nobody really has any problems on those. So I'm not too worried about the rest of them. It's just problem one that is usually a tricky one for people. Um, for the reflection journal, you guys are doing a great job on that. So as usual, <laughs> same sort of stuff. And then your self-assessment this week is longer than usual. It's 18 questions. Um, a lot of them can be done very simply with a calculator, though, especially if your calculator can do trig functions. Um, so that should save you a lot of time as long as you make sure you are in the correct mode, whether you're in radian mode or degree mode. My calculator says at the bottom right which mode it's in. So right now it's in radian mode, and so it says rad. And then I have a button that says degree, and then I can change it to degrees if I want. But mostly, um, when you get to calculus, pretty much everything you do in calculus is going to be in radians. Half the stuff we're doing in this class are degrees, because things in the real world tend to be degrees. But once you get to calculus, it's all radians. So knowing how to convert between the two is going to be really helpful. And so, suggested schedule. <laughs> I'm going to have to zoom in on this one. I tried to make the font as big as possible, and then it wouldn't show up on the screen. So, um, there are a lot of, as, as I said, there are 10 sections. There's a lot to read. So, in order to really have enough time to go through everything, you need to basically do two sections at a time. So, that's how I have it arranged, as two sections at a time. I know that it's a lot. Um, but if you do two sections at a time, it does leave you a day on Tuesday to get through all of the additional links and videos. And I did pick from the review exercises problems that go with each of the two sections. So instead of doing like 10, if you're doing one to 31, so that'd be 16 problems that you'd be doing roughly a day. So not too many more extra problems but it is a lot more material to cover, and that is really unfortunate. Um, you only need, let's see, so if we're looking at which questions on the application assignment you can do, you can do one and two with 4.1 and 4.2, um, three and four with 4.3 and 4.4, and then the last one once you get to 5.2 and 5.3. So notice, that you don't really need 4.5, 4.6, that's the graphing stuff. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't made a video on that because it's not necessary for the application assignment. So I do have a video on most of the things that will be helpful for the application assignment. So that's the schedule. I know it's gonna be a really rough week. That's <laughs> um, just kind of the way that it, it Bell, because trig is a lot of stuff, and unfortunately, we're just trying to smush it all in one class. Um, there is a separate trig class, but it only runs like once a year, and only like two students ever sign up for it. So that's why we are trying to smush it here in pre calc. So, do you guys have any questions on what you have to do for the or um, the assignment or anything like that? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, that's easy peasy. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will be able to join me tomorrow for, um, at the same time tomorrow for 4.1 um, degrees, radians, all the, the basic definition stuff that you need. So um, thank you guys for joining me. And, of course, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you're struggling with the trig, let me know. It is kind of weird. <laughs> so, but, you know, some people it t makes total sense. For me, it's one of those things where 
I really struggle to memorize it and I just have to keep going back to my notes. Like it does not stick in my brain. So um, I don't know. Each person's different. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow night. So bye.